All right, so let's carry on. Um, so we just created the uh, the order by, um, so that the uh, so that the teams are in alphabetical order rather than numeric order from our database. So now what we need to do is we need to actually have the ability to add a page, um, uh, sorry, to add a team to the application. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a button up here. Um, I've already styled one, so I'm just going to go to teams index and I'm just going to put it in the h1 tag which is completely invalid but uh, it'll work for our purposes remember this is not customer facing anyway so it doesn't really matter whether it's valid HTML or not so I've created an a tag within my h1 that's going to um, put a, a little button over there because I've already styled it like I say we need to wire it up to a URL um, and basically the, the URL has to have a form on it so that we can actually enter like a new team name for the for the new team so we're gonna we're gonna go back to this we're gonna change that uh, link to teams controller and then add and what we're gonna do is if I just refresh that page it's obviously gonna bomb out because that uh, that doesn't exist well, it, it, well if I was to click the button then that it would bomb out because that page doesn't exist um, what we need to do is we actually need to go to our controller and we need to uh, create a new method called add public action result add return view um, now I just need to give you kind of a little warning that the way I'm going to do this is not really the MVC way it's kind of a, th this is just basically showing you how it works rather than um, doing what the MVC way would be it, and the way that would be is there are tools built into Visual Studio to allow you to actually scaffold it and by scaffold it I mean it'll actually generate all the code for you um, but the whole point of learning how this works is basically to actually do it manually so once you've done this tutorial if you want to look into um, ASP.NET MVC scaffolding to figure out how this actually should be done um, automatically um, then that's probably your best port of call but let's uh, let's just stick with actually learning how the how to do the basics of um, creating a uh, creating something manually um, and, and, and adding something to a database without having MVC do it all for us because um, I think if you've got a fundamental understanding of what's going on underneath then you're in a better position to actually figure out what's going wrong if uh, if something does go wrong when the code's been automatically generated for you so let's carry on so what we need to do is we actually need we we need two URLs um, that are exactly the same but they perform different functions we need one to actually show the form to us and one to post the contents of the form to in order to uh, then write the, the contents of whatever we've added into the form we need to write that into the database as a an actual team um, so we need to define what's called a get and a post now the post is the the one that actually takes the information and then chucks it in the database it gets it from the form the form actually submits to the post method um, the get method is the one where it actually displays the form to you so what we're going to do is we're just gonna, we've already got this add method so we're going to just make this our get uh, except verbs dot get so that basically means that whenever we post the form to this URL which is teams add it will never it will never actually get to here what we need is another method also called add but we need to define it as a post so basically when the form gets submitted it will uh, it will come to this one instead of this one um, but we also we get an error here which says uh, we also have a member called add with the same parameter types and that's because we we haven't told this method what it is that we're going to be posting to it and what we are going to be posting to it is uh, a team and uh, it's as simple as that now if there were any errors with what we had entered we would basically want to show the view again with a with an error message and um, so what we but we would also want to keep the information that we'd entered so if we if we had entered a team name but maybe not an email address or whatever if there were if there were more fields then we would just basically return back to the view but we would want to pass whatever we had previously entered back into it and sort of pre-populate the uh, the text boxes so I'm gonna just pass in if you remember 
when we reach this method we're passing in a team so what we're going to do is we're just going to pass it straight back to the view so whatever we entered whatever we pushed into this uh, method here just gets pushed straight back if we reach this part of the code and we're going to add some code up here to actually do the processing of whatever it is that we've entered and then add it to the uh, to the database so I'll save that um, so now what we need to do is we've got our add methods here which means the URLs are going to work but we actually need to add a page with uh, with a form on it so if we right click on teams in the views folder click add uh, click view and we are going to create a new view called add and I'm in two minds as to whether to scaffold this view because um, hmm, what's the best thing to do here Yeah, let's scaffold the view because basically it means we won't have to write out the form and stuff like that and I'll just explain it to you but as long as we're doing like the back end processing we can actually see what it is that uh, is going on. So we're going to create this view, it's going to be add because that's the name of the uh, the method that we've, uh, the methods that we've created. But with this template here we're going to choose one of our models and we're going to choose, uh, oh sorry, it's going to be a create template because we're obviously going to be entering the information for this team and then now it's asking us what type of model do we want to actually create and of course we're creating a team at the minute so we click on that you can see in this list it's actually um, it, it knows about all of our different types of data we've got matches match reports and our teams so we're going to select the team we're going to use a layout page we're gonna, it's going to be on the admin page if you remember and uh, we'll just hit add and what that's going to do is it's going to automatically generate an HTML form for us um, but in a little bit more complicated manner than you might be used to so let's just hit add and I'll go through it with you so this is what it's generated I'll just change that to H1. Um, so you can see it's uh, it's created a strongly typed view. The, it's saying the model for this view must be of type team, and it's using the admin template. It's got a title at the top called add, which I've just changed to an H1. You may have noticed. Um, and now it's it's beginning to create the actual form itself. So what it does is it doesn't actually write out the form tags. It generates the form tags on the fly when we re when we um, do the when we reload the page. But if you hover over this method here called begin form, it actually says this writes an opening form tag to the response. The form uses the post method and the request is processed by the action method for the view. All that means is the form is on a post method and it's basically going to, because we call this add, it's going to use the post method of add in the back end. So continuing on, um, we've just got some like redundant markup here, we don't really need that but we'll just leave it there in place anyway. Um, we have a validation summary which is basically a list of all of the errors that possibly happened with the form. So if you don't enter a team name or whatever it'll split he's done under a team name. Um, this is where it writes out a label to say a team name and then this is where it writes out an editor or a text box for the team name there. So that's part of the model. Um, and then there's a validation message underneath which basically says uh, which would it, instead of the summary which shows all errors this one would only show an error related to the yet uh, to the form of to the um, to the input box above it. And then we have a submit button um, which will basically submit to this form action and send this information to this uh, to this post method here, which is where we would need to deal with it. Um, so you can see they're all. Uh, if I just load this page, I'm going to just press F5 to uh, run the application to build it. When it's succeeded, um, I'll restart the. Uh, I'll refresh the page. We should be able to click on this add button now, and you'll basically see the form that's gotten generated from it. Um, it might not look very nice but uh, we'll still be able to use it so if we click on add you can see we've got a new page called add it's asking for team and you can see it's generated a team now if I just press uh, if I'll press F12 to bring up my developer tools here we let's inspect what it's actually done so you can see it's created a form a form action of teams add and it's also created uh, it's created a, a, a label there you can see it's highlighting over there a label it's also created an input box and in another group it's created the uh, the submit button there yeah, so it's, it's kind of a standard form but it's put in loads of redundant markup and basically you know th the reason it does that is because um, normal MVC projects they use something called uh, bootstrap which is essentially just a, it's a framework to allow you to style 
the application nicely without uh, without actually having to do anything um and it's kind of like a it's kind of like a uh, a foundation that you that you build on but i just haven't included it in this project um you could if you like but i i just i don't like it so i decided to do my own template um but that does mean that i need to uh, to style the form up and stuff otherwise it's just going to end up looking nasty like this but I'd rather that than have uh, a huge framework for what is essentially just a simple, a dead simple website. Um, but anyway, regardless, so you can see it's created the form. If I hit create, that's actually going to post to this uh, method in the background. It's going to post into there. And we can check that that's happening by putting a breakpoint. Just clicking there so there's a red mark. And what will happen is when the code actually runs and reaches this line, it'll pause and uh, we'll be able to see what's going on. So if I actually enter... I'll just enter uh, what team don't we have. Um, Stoke City, I feel sorry for them at the minute, so we'll put that in. So if I hit create, you can see it's paused, and w because we're passing this team in, this model of team, we should actually be able to, be able to ex inspect what we're actually passing back into that view. So hover over it, and then if you click on the triangle, you can see I'm actually passing in Stoke City there. Um, there is no ID because that's automatically generated, um, but the team name is successfully getting passed back from the form into this method. So what we need to do is really we need to add some code above this bit to process what it is that we've uh, what we've actually entered into the uh, into the in, into the form. So we'll just pause, we'll just stop that because we don't really need to do anything. All that was going to do was return the view back to the uh, back to the page, and we would just see what we had entered. Um, so what we need to do is we need to check. If we had scaffolded this uh, this this controller, it would have created methods that automatically sort of did this validation for us, because it's put it, you know it's a rapid application development env environment, so it it wants you to do things a certain way to bring the data in. But the trouble with doing that, like I say, is if you don't know what's going on, then it, it, you're not really learning anything. So we're going to do this manually. The first thing really that we need to do is we need to check to see if there has actually been a team entered, a team name entered, because if someone just enters something blank then it's no good to us so we need to just put a little check in to see if and the reason that I'm putting this exclamation mark is because this basically reverses what I'm about to write I'll just type it out and I'll explain to you dot is no or white space team dot team name so what we're basically saying here is if not empty, we're basically saying, is this team name empty, um, or does it contain just spaces? So it's so it's essentially empty. Um, this operator here, this exclamation mark, sort of reverses the result of this. So string dot is null or white space, and then with a parameter attached to it, would basically say, is the contents of this team dot team name null or white space? And if it is, what do you want to do? So what we're saying is, if this is if this is null or empty, we're actually reversing it. So we're saying if it's not null or empty, then we're going to do whatever's in here. Sorry if that was a little bit uh, confusing, but we're basically saying if this team dot team name is not null and not white space, then we'll do this code. But if it is, we'll just skip over the whatever's in here and then just return the view back to the uh, the information. So I'll put an else in there to say there was no oops no team entered so what we need to do is we need to do um, model state dot add add model error and please enter a team name so what we're doing here is we're actually passing back to the uh, the model we're actually adding an error on the team name key, which obviously corresponds to this this part of the model. So we're actually passing back an error to say, right, we've reached this piece of code. You didn't actually enter anything. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to pass that back into the view, and then that will be displayed as part of our validation summary and the uh, the validation message for the for the uh, for the team name text box. So I'll just run that to show you what I mean. It's a little bit confusing to explain, but uh, hopefully you get the get the gist of what's going on. So if I clear that, and I'm not actually entering anything, 
I'll just put a breakpoint in uh, the controller just to prove where it is that we're actually going to be uh, where we're hitting. Just wait for it to wake up. Is that gonna is that gonna kick in or what? Debug start debugging. Not sure why these are not gonna get hit. No symbols have been loaded. Let's just uh let's just hit this page. Ah, it's gone through now. So we're on the uh the ad page, we're just waiting for it to wake up. There we go. So if I don't enter a team name, hopefully we're going to hit this breakpoint here to say um, there was nothing entered. So if I go back and just hit create, you can see it's actually entered this else clause. So it is saying this team is empty, this team name is empty. So we can actually hover over and see what team dot team name is, and you can see it's it's null. It's basically it's empty. Um, so that condition there doesn't match so we can't actually run this bit of code here that we haven't written yet it's jumped into here and it's now going to add a model error saying team name please enter a team name so if I I'll just uh, clear that breakpoint there if I just say debug continue it should go back to this page and you can see it's saying please enter a team name and that's because it's hit the uh, the validation thing that's underneath the uh, underneath the text box in our in our form. So if I was to uh, to create, I'll just close that. If I was to actually enter a team name, um, I need some way of getting in here. If one equals one. So if we if I do enter a team name, we should actually be able to enter into this uh, this section here of code and then we should be able to start processing it and saving it into the database so again I'll run this and uh, this time if I enter a team name we should actually reach this piece of code as opposed to that piece of code just refresh the page again for my computer to wake up so again if I don't enter anything hit create it's going to hit the bad breakpoint and basically add an error so we'll just continue there it's showing please enter a, a, a team name but if I was to enter Stoke City and then hit create it's going to hit the other breakpoint so we've actually passed this parameter and if I hover over a team team name you can see it's actually yeah, picked up that we've entered Stoke City so closing that down and I'll just get rid of this code because that's uh, not what we want to do. We need to actually create a new team. Oh, actually, we don't need to create a new team. We just need to use the one that we've uh, we've added. But what we do need to do is we need a way to add that into the database. And the way we do that is we'll go back to our repository, the Teams repository, and open that up. And what we'll do is we'll add another method to allow direct communication with the database and saving a record. And the, the easy way to do that is to say public void because we're not asking for anything back add team t so we're basically creating a new method called add and we're going to pass our new team into it and we're going to basically say db dot uh, teams dot add sorry insert on submit I always get confused there t and we're passing t there. So now we need uh, a way to save the changes to the database. So we'll create another one. Public void save changes. Let's correct that H there. And in this one, we're not actually passing anything into it. We're just basically saying perform a command on the database to save any changes. So in here, we just put db dot submit changes. So you can see in this one, we're, we're actually calling the add method, and we're saying insert on submit this new team and in the save changes we're saying submit the changes so when this gets called because this has been queued up it'll actually execute this for us easy way to illustrate that is to go back to our teams controller we need to make a new reference to our teams repository uh, repository teams rep was new teams repository so we're creating a reference to this teams repository in this part of the code and we're going to say teams rep dot add and we're going to pass our new team in that we're creating 
and then we're going to say teams rep dot save changes oops teams rep dot save so hopefully you can see what's going on there when we've actually passed um, our form in and we actually have entered a team name we want to say uh, we want to create a new teams repository we want to add it to the queue to be added and then we want to save the changes to the database and then that's job done really we would just uh, we can we can either continue on which we, means it'll jump back to the view or we can put a redirect in here to take us back to the uh, the index page with our list of um, our list of teams including the new the new team so what I can do is I can uh, put return redirect oops teams so when we reach this once the database has saved the changes it's just going to redirect us back to the uh, the teams page and that'll show us our list of all the teams and we should have the new team that we added um, displayed on there as well so I'll just run this now and because obviously we're um, we're doing a return redirect we're doing a return in this position here none of this code will get executed underneath so it'll, it won't actually reach this where we return where we actually display the view again with the uh, with the form in it we'll just complete we'll just completely skip over that we'll add it to the database and then just return back to the uh, to the teams page so I'll just refresh this page so as if we're adding a new one I got those breakpoints set. I'm just going to turn the breakpoint off. So if I don't enter anything, it's going to say, "Please enter a team name." If I then enter a team team name, and then hit enter, it's going to create it in the database, and then it's going to redirect us back to the uh, the teams page, and that's what it's done. And now we have Stoke City in our database, and we can just double check that by going to our server explorer opening up teams by right clicking show table data and we should have a new one in called Stoke City and again because it's alphabetical it's placed in the, the, the middle of the list so that is how we add a new team to our database jobs are good in you could extend it of course because you don't you don't really want to enter the same team twice so the way we would do that is and this is just a little bit of validation we could say because we've already opened up our teams repository we can say we can do a little bit of funky code using the uh, using the method that we've already written so i could say if teams rep dot find get all teams dot where the names to lowercase equals team dot team name dot to lower dot count is greater than zero that line of code there I appreciate it looks a little bit a little bit um, complicated but all it's doing is it's calling the the method get all teams where the team names in lowercase are the same as the team name we've just entered in lowercase and if there are any results so if there's more than zero results we run this little piece of code in here and what we would basically say is um, model state dot add error to the team name that team name is already in use else we do the rest of this stuff here so I'll just put a little comment in here. If we reach here, the team is in use. We already have a team with that name. The team can be added. So if you want to study that code and just try to figure out what it is that's going on, like I say, we're just getting all the teams back. We're checking to see if one exists that has the same team name. Um, and we're, we're obviously doing a count to see if one, at least one exists. If it does exist, we can't add it. So we're just adding a model error. We'll jump out of here right down to the bottom to return the view but if it doesn't exist we execute this code and we return a redirect back to the uh, the teams list so let's run that and hopefully we won't be able to enter another team called Stoke City because it already exists and this is just an example of sort of simple validation um, obviously when you've learned C sharp a little bit more um, 
you'll you'll basically understand what it is that uh, is going on. But this kind of is just a little simple illustration of how you can validate just to do some checks on your code to make sure you can't enter bad information. So let's go back to this page. Let's add another one. You can see we've already got Stoke City in there. So if I try to enter Stoke City again, it will show an error message. Stoke City. Oops. You can see the team name is already in use, so it is actually triggering it. And I can do that in any case. I could do Stoke with capitals, and it'll it'll still pick it up, saying the the name's already in use. But if I put Stoke City two, and create that, you can see it doesn't already exist. If I try doing that again, Stoke City two, the team name is already in use, and we can double check again in our database just by right clicking the teams show table data so we should have another one called Stoke City I'm going to delete that out just by hitting delete yes I want to delete it because we don't want it should probably do it to Sunderland as well if we go back to our team list you can see the database is updated and we're back to uh, back to normal so that is basically how to add information into a database dead simple um, I'm going to cut this video here. This one was actually supposed to show you how to add matches to uh, the teams, like creating a fixture. But I think I'm going to do that in a separate video because it's a little bit more in-depth because we're bringing in more information. And I think this is enough to sort of go off um, go off on right now just to kind of get used to adding stuff to the, uh, to the database. So next video we'll do adding the actual fixtures, the matches themselves um, between two teams. And uh, hopefully we'll start getting uh, towards having a, a, a full fully functioning and website shortly so that yeah there is going to be an extra video um, in between the, the third and fourth we'll call it 3.5 but I think it's going to be too in depth to kind of add to this one because I think this is one we should be up to about 45 minutes to an hour on this se uh, section but hopefully we'll be able to bash through the uh, the next one a little bit quicker because you've already got like a, a fundamental understanding of what's going on and, and, and what we're doing when we're adding information to the database so I'm going to leave it there if you like the video please thumbs up I know in some parts I haven't exactly been clear about what's going on but it's quite a difficult subject to teach so uh, hopefully you're still managing to, to follow on but if you like the content give it a thumbs up please subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one alright thanks for watching cheers